deficit was enormous and countries right across Europe were finding their economies failing too. We've come a really long way in five years, but this election is about the step that we take next. So yes, we've created 174,000 jobs in Scotland, but let's go further to make sure that there's a job for everyone who wants one. Yes, we've half the deficit, but let's eliminate it entirely and start paying our debts so that our children don't have to. And yes, we had a referendum. Let's build on that result rather than rerunning it continually. So I promise to fight every day to keep the recovery going so our young people grow up knowing that there's jobs and opportunities for them. And I promise to fight head, heart, body and soul to honour that referendum result to keep our country together. And that means no deals with the people who would break up Britain. So if you believe and want to build and keep the recovery going, and if you believe in keeping our country together, okay. then the Scottish Conservatives stand with you. Thank okay. you. Um, I want to take the first uh, question to Ruth Davidson. It comes from uh, Chloe Hardy. Chloe, your question, please. Um, it's about the NHS, um, why it's not been funded properly as... I know it's not been funded properly as my husband had lost spinal fluid for 10 years and they'd missed it three to four times and that was after he had an MRI a few times. Then he's went for compensation. He cannot get compensation because you have, the NHS have not got the funding to know about how somebody can lose spinal fluid. To, to be taught about how to find that. Okay, so Chloe, can't get that. I, I'm going to put that to Ruth Davidson and we will come back to you for an observation in what you hear. Ruth Davidson. Well, Chloe, I love our NHS. It saved my life, it saved my legs, it's helped me walk again on more than one occasion and my sister is an NHS doctor. In Scotland, we have full control at the Scottish Parliament of our NHS uh, and the money that's spent uh, in England as part of a formula comes up to Scotland. Now, that money in has increased in England every single year in England and Wales. But not all of that money has been passed on in Scotland. That's why I've been asking in the Scottish Parliament again and again, why not? And it's not just me that said that. You'll have, some of you will have heard me during the referendum talking about a big report that the IFS did. That's the Institute for Fiscal Studies. And they said that hundreds of millions of pounds that should have been passed on if we spent the same on our NHS in Scotland as we did in England and Wales hasn't been. And that's a question that I continually put to the current Scottish Government. OK, Chloe, can I have an observation on what you've heard? Well, it's going to obviously be a question that needs to be answered at some point I because agree. it's a question that we are all saying, where has this money gone to? And we can't afford for everybody at a young age to be getting ill, very ill, and not treated for the right <coughs> thing that they need to be treated for because the doctors don't know what they're doing because of this, yet you don't have an answer. But the well, thing is, we need that I agree. That I think our doctors and nurses do a fantastic job, but they need support and they need the politicians to make sure that the resource is there so that they can do the best job possible. Well, that's what I mean about we need that answer so that we can actually do the funding and do everything and also get the midwives and everything back okay, and the doctors Chloe. and the NHS I back. Want, I want to stick in this issue of funding public services. That question was a question which was specifically, obviously, about the NHS, but there's maybe a broader point here about public service. Who would like to make a contribution, make an observation, or put a, a direct question to, to Ruth Davidson on that? Yes, sir. So we've talked a lot about the, the deficit and um, reduction of the deficit, but that translates to me as more austerity. When will we see a transformation into living standards and, and trying to get people who are on the poverty line um, better services? Well, sure. I mean, we have done, as, as I said uh, in the, the, the section immediately before, a lot to help people on lower earners. People who are out of work to get them into work and create new jobs. People that are earning minimum wage. We're raising the minimum wage above inflation. And we're also cutting taxes for people that don't earn very much money. So you, you have to earn a bit more before you start paying tax. So they're all things that we're doing to help people at the low wage. But the reason that the deficit matters is because right now we are paying every single week across the UK almost the same in debt interest as it costs us per year to run our police force. £46 billion is spent just on the interest of our debt. So if we don't bring that down, that will only grow and grow and leave us less and less money for our public Can services. Can we be clear, though, that given the um, deficit reduction plans which the Prime Minister and the Chancellor have outlined, if they're executed, will that lead to a real terms cut in the money for the Scottish Parliament 
over the next five years, yes or no? It will over the first three years of that five years, and after that, that's when the deficit gets eliminated completely, so and we start paying down our a, debt, so we'll have more money coming into the system. There'll be a system. real terms cut in the Scottish Parliament's budget for three years, if you vote Conservative. There will be a modest cut, in the same way that we said that we will cut some other things too. We'll cut some of the departmental budgets in Westminster. Okay. We signed up to, can I, if I could just explain this, Bernard, if I could, because I think it's important. We signed up to £30 billion more cuts over the next Parliament. The Liberal Democrats signed up to that too, so did the Labour Party, because that's what we think is needed to get the country back on track so this credit card bill that we've run up doesn't keep growing. Now what we've said is we'll reduce government departments at Westminster, we'll help go after tax avoidance and tax evasion, and we'll also reduce the benefits bill by getting more people back into work, by freezing uh, some benefits and by reducing the benefits cap. So we've been very open about that and we think that will get the country back on track by 2018 and will stop dumping our debts on our children who shouldn't okay, start out life with them. The chap at the back, yes sir? Ruth, I'm a wee bit older than yourself. I remember Margaret Thatcher. I remember about your Conservative government done to this country. You're saying jobs for the youth of today. Who caused all these jobs to go in the first place? Okay, P well, part that one. I want to take one okay. or two more contributions. Yes sir? The no, no, sorry, sorry the, the, the chat behind you. Yes. Um, well, there's all this talk about benefits, and I just think to myself, that's all fine and grand, but it's never going to the right people. I've been an unemployed for three and a half years. I've, I've applied for thousands and thousands of jobs. I get no benefits at all, and nobody will tell me why. Okay, do you want to maybe deal well, with those two points? I, I can't Davison. speak to your individual circumstances, and, and that shouldn't be the case, because the benefits and welfare system exists for the people who aren't able to support themselves. And we all, all taxpayers, pay into that in order that we can make sure that, that people have that quality of life. But one thing that we have done is that we've put money into, for example, the work programme to help get the people furthest from the job market, so long-term unemployed like yourself, back into work. I said in my opening, 174,000 more jobs in Scotland since the coalition took power. Okay. But the bigger number for me is the 55,000. That's the number of people that are off job seekers allowance and into work. So they were people that were far from the I jobs want, market. I want to move on slightly. I want to take another question from Oliver Phillip. Where is Oliver? Your question, please. Hi, Ruth. The Conservatives have endlessly called for Labour to rule out a coalition with the SNP, but haven't themselves ruled out a coalition with UKIP if they are the largest party, meaning Scotland will be governed by two parties that it didn't vote for. Can you assure us that there will be no such deal with UKIP after the election, yes or no? No deals with UKIP. They won't have enough MPs in Parliament. They will not get into double digits in Parliament in order to be able to have a coalition deal. So there will be no deal. I've already said that my preference is minority government. The Prime Minister said if he doesn't get a majority, his preference is minority government. The reason that there's a deal being talked about between Labour and the SNP is because Labour can't get over the line. They're going to need the SNP. And to me, for people right across this country that are looking and weighing up their votes, you know, if you're not an SNP voter, why would you vote for the Labour Party who are going to get the SNP, you know, are going to do a deal with them? And if you're an SNP voter but not a Labour Party voter, why vote SNP to put the Labour Party in power? Oliver? Vote for who you want for. Vote for what you want. And I say if you're, you know, don't believe in independence, if you believe in a strong United Kingdom, Oliver? if you believe in a recovery, vote Conservative. Well, I think, as all the polls are indicating, it's probably going to be a hung parliament, and I think David Cameron will stop at nothing to remain in number 10, even if that means going into a coalition with UKIP, which, and I think a majority of people in Scotland do not agree with his politics or his, his party at all. Well, if you're so interested in the polls and saying that they are showing a hung parliament, which they are at the moment, they're also showing that UKIP are looking likely to get about two seats. So you don't put a party of two seats into a coalition because you, know, okay. you don't make a DPM somebody who's only got a bag carrier to go with them. Okay, on that point, uh, thank mm. you very much indeed, uh, Ruth Davidson.